Welcome to the Wolverine Digest Podcast, the best spot for objective and authentic coverage of Michigan athletics. If you want open dialogue, honest opinions, and in-depth coverage of the maize and blue, this is the podcast for you. And now, here's your host, Brandon Brown, joined as always by Chris Bradley. I'm just going to start by saying go blue. Yes, sir. It's another Wednesday night, Chris. We're back, dude. We're really getting, we're pretty responsible at this point, don't you think? When I, resp- I, oh, that's, I don't know. I, w- I don't know that I'd say responsible. We're consistent. We're consistent. Yeah. And we had a little, uh, a little one in between on Sunday or Monday, whatever day it was, talking about recruiting a little bit, what Michigan State's doing up the road, and we'll do that again here tonight. But first, before we get into our other topics, before we get into some silliness, because you got, you have got some shenanigans to address <laughs> a little later, and we will get into that. But before we do, we are super excited to welcome in another current Michigan Wolverine football player. It's crazy to me because I didn't cover him like directly. He's a Florida guy. So I never saw him in person when I was covering recruiting, but I remember when Michigan landed him and now young Mr. Mike Morris is like, old. He like is. Morris. he's a senior now, man. This is fourth <laughs> year, I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> fourth year, Mike Morris. And I know Chris and I both are just super optimistic about what this year can bring for you, Mike. So first of all, thank you for the time. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy, dude. You're coming into year number four. Like, is that wild to think about now? Hey, uh, I still ha- I still find myself saying like I'm 19, I'm 20, I'm 19, <laughs> like 18, but like I'm 21 years old now. Uh, everybody looks up to me as like the big dog, and I'm like, yo, I still feel like a freshman, man. <laughs> that, I'm t- hey, that never goes away either. Even as never. a parent, I mean, Brandon never. and I, we've got kids, and I still feel like a kid. Like sometimes I'm like, how the hell am I able to take care of another human being? Like I feel like a kid. <laughs> I do got to ask, though, today on a day like today, I'm sweating my ass off. I'm struggling out there. You're from down in Florida, though. So th- does this feel like a little bit more like home to you? Are you used to this type of environment? That's worse, man. I'm telling you, that's worse. <laughs> it's so much worse. I'm glad, like, Michigan summers are unreal compared to Florida summers and compared to weather because it's just sunshine. It's nice. It's not hurting you. Like, <laughs> Florida, it hurts, man. Like, it's like, especially when you're out there running, you fight for your life, man. That humidity is no joke. Yeah. It builds character, builds toughness, it builds, though, and I'm sure oh that's – yeah, that's, that's Everyone's what... so good at football. It builds like – that's you got to fight the – you got to fight the humidity yeah, all day. Yeah. How, so how, I, often do you, how often do you get back down home? How, how often do you go back to Florida and hang out down there a little bit? Uh, I mean, I try to go home as often as possible. Uh, I've really been home lately. I've been home – yeah, it's been a little minute since I've been home. Uh, well, I, it's working out. So I did want to ask about Florida though, because you're from Florida. Your dad played at Florida state. I'm curious going back to, you know, your recruitment, were there any other schools that were pushing for you? I know that I think you were a Florida state commit at one point, correct? Were there any other schools that were in play? And at the end of the day, what ultimately brought you up North to Michigan? Um, you know, I really like Clemson. I really like Clemson a lot. Clemson was, uh, really high on recruiting, especially when, um, Especially when Jimbo left, Clemson was like number one. Like at one point, I after I visited, after I like took a visit there, unofficial visit, uh, and think it was in the summer. Uh, I fell in love. They had a slide and everything. All the facilities were really nice. Uh, all the coaches <laughs> were really nice. Uh, yeah, I loved it. Clem- I'd say Clemson, Tennessee was really big o- over there as well. Um, some of the Florida State coaches were over there. One coach that I particularly like really liked was Coach Kelly. Uh, he's a safeties coach. I really liked him. Uh, and then um, Michigan was really big. Miami was really big. I love Miami. Uh, if Miami wasn't in Florida, I'd probably be there right now. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I had it's to, that I, heat, right? It's that heat. It's not the heat. I just had to get. I just had to get a home. New scenery. Just get out of there. I needed it. Um, <laughs> and, Cle- I mean, and Clemson was Clemson was killing it at the time. I mean, they were like Clemson you know was killing it at the time. They were. They were. That was yeah. a hard. That was a hard no. Yeah. So what what I want to do is before we go into a little bit about your Michigan career and how you get here, something pretty cool happened recently. Uh, The University of Michigan made history by hiring the first female graduate assistant on a power five football staff. And that happens to be your sister. And I wanted to talk. I was going to say, man, I wanted to talk a little bit about that, that, you know, that's I. I feel like that was a cool story for a minute and then people brushed over it, but that's history in the making. Can you kind of elaborate on, you know, what that meant to you as her brother, what that means to her? Talk about that experience a little she bit. She likes to hide it because she does like to brag. 
But every time she introduces herself to anybody, I always bring it up because I'm so proud of her. Yeah, I'm so I'm so proud of my sister. Um, she's just done so such amazing things in her in her life, and uh, this was just adding to that. And I look up to her so much. I will never repeat this. <laughs> yeah, well, you I, should I, repeat I, that. You should. Yeah. Those are things you should repeat. Uh, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> later in life. You'll get there later yeah, in life. Later uh, in life yeah. So first, what I want to do is I want to talk about the 2021 season, man. It was obviously a magical run for you guys, mm. uh, culminated with the win over Ohio State. Let's start there. Uh, just talk about that game a little bit and then what that experience was like on the field afterwards. Every single player that we've had on has described it as magical. It felt like a dream. You're down there on the field. The snow's falling. People are rushing the field. I mean, what was that moment like for you guys? I honestly couldn't. I, I can't. It's like words, words just like don't really, there's no, I, I, I'm getting choked up. I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to choke up now, but it's like words cannot describe that moment. It's just, it was just so pure, so natural. Like we were the team to finally beat Ohio State under Coach Harbaugh, you know? And that was just something that nobody's ever done. Me and Jabo talked about it like after the game. Like nobody has ever done that. Like we we went to we went through a long line of list of DNs and who can never say they beat Ohio State. And we're the ones that said they can beat we can beat Ohio State. And he was like, we were like, bro, we just went two and four last season. Hmm. And we just like beat them like not even like on yeah yeah it was it was beautiful it was so i uh, my question I, I guess you guys obviously there was a shift in focus towards wanting to beat ohio state and we saw the signs up in the weight room we saw that it was what are you doing to beat ohio state today what do you think it was i mean was that did that come from the team did that come from the coaching staff where where was the renewed sense of focus on ohio state where did that come from um the coaches made it apparent um, and then we just followed their lead. Um, new coaching staff. Uh, when um, dang, what's my man's name? Um, when uh, Mike McDonald. McDonald. When McDonald got the, uh, he's gonna, he's gonna I knew he, he's gonna get your <laughs> ass for that one. He's hey, gonna get you listen, for that one. <laughs> that's what happens when a coach stays for a year. Hey, <laughs> that's what happens. He needed, he needed to come back. Yeah. That's why. That's what you can tell him. <laughs> the mad guy here. Uh, it was just like a whole focus shift of. Uh, how we conduct our business and how it's ran and like he just breathed life into us we had like a finally we had like a young coaching staff who was like not probably like around 10 years older than all of us and they could really relate to us and um they just breathed life in us and then once that happened our defense got so much stronger um we they believed in us more um and then like they just raised our morale and and believed in us that we could do it and made us believe in ourselves that we could do it. So yeah. once that happened, I feel like no one could have stopped us. And, and you've had a little bit of turnover now since then. And so I'm curious, you talk about the energy that a guy like Mike McDonald brought to the locker room, to the program. Do yeah. you still get the sense from guys like Jesse Minner and these new guys that are there that that same energy is there? Do, do you still feel that same feeling this year that you felt going into 2021? The thing is, it's there, but everyone says it's different because of how, like, where we were at, and now, like, where we're at now, so everyone's like, oh, man, it's not the same, it's not the same. I feel like we're already there. Like, we're in that we're in that moment where everything's good, the energy is still high, but we're expecting, like, this high thing, this high energy to come back like it was last year. I'm saying, like, I feel like as a team, we're already there. So it's I more think- so you're, you're saying you're riding the momentum that was already created last yeah. year. You haven't lost yeah. it. Okay, so yeah, that makes sense. And I think I think it's – I think it's totally fair and only human nature to say like you feel different coming off a two and four season than you do yeah. off of 12 and two. I mean, it's like, yeah. it's not even comparable. So like the mentality, the approach is going to feel, it's going to feel different. And Oh, by the way, you got a new DC, you got a new D line coach. You got some new faces yeah. around there doing some different things. So yeah, it's going to feel different. Speaking of that, I don't know. Hopefully I'm not stepping on your toes here, Chris. I'm sure you no, had go ahead, up, but coach Elston uh, has, has been billed as like this tech, you know, this technician, uh, really gets after the small details. Sean Newell was one of the guys I got to know maybe better than some of the other coaches just from being at different events and kind of bumping into him, talking to him. Always loved his energy. I know the players really liked him, but now you've got a new guy in there. What what have you seen out of Mike Elston in the couple months that he's been there, and how excited are you to play for him? Um, I mean, I pick his brain all the time about certain stuff because of, like, just 
just what he's done in the past. Like we are, everyone knows what he's done mm-hmm. at Notre Dame. Um, uh, people call him third down guru. So I pick his brain all the time. I ask him like, how do I look? How am I looking out there? And um, yeah, I really, I really enjoy his presence. I really enjoy his energy. Um, he he has an amazing family. Um, but uh, I really, I really enjoy him. I really like him. I love talking to him. Um, yeah. I, now, I, I, yeah, I, I, I have nothing bad to say about him. Yeah. <laughs> well, it seems, and, and I think that was what who who did we have on last time? There were like Chris the, Jenkins said the same Jenkins same yeah. thing. Like wasn't sure about the dude, and now he's like one of his favorite you know favorite coaches on yeah. the staff. So um, it seems like he's had a positive impact. I did ask you about Ohio State, which was obviously a success story. I want to move on now to Georgia, where there was a little bit more of a, a different end in that scenario. And one of the things that stood out after the game, I know that you know, JJ and Andrell and Donovan and those guys, the picture of those three guys watching got a lot of attention, but you were also out there on the field. Cut we, me out, man. We, we, I was going to say, we could cut see you. Out. We could see you from the press box. I've got you on video. Yeah, out there. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. But, so, yeah. so I, so for me as a, as a guy up in the press box watching it, I'm like, that's, that's inspiring because now you're looking at like the next generation, the guys who are going to lead this thing into the next year. Can you just talk about what that moment was like after that game? You guys had come so far. You stand out there. You watch Georgia celebrate. What's going through your mind at that point? I hurt, man, because I didn't. I didn't go there to lose. Um, I feel like as a team, we were okay with just getting there, and whatever happened, happened. Like we weren't supposed to be there, regardless. So the mindset was we weren't supposed to be here. So um, I feel like we should be happy where we are spend like have a good time while we're here and whatever happens Saturday happen whatever happens at the game time happens and I didn't go in I didn't go into that with that mindset I get, I go I went into the game that mindset of hey we're trying to win a national championship here like I don't I'm not trying to go home uh trying to go back to Ann Arbor or back to Florida uh that day after it was New Year's right the day after New yeah, Year's yeah yeah I was just trying to go home I wanted to celebrate have a good time with my team and then go back to Ann Arbor and game prep again uh, but it didn't happen that way. And um, I just mainly just wanted to just see how, see their reactions because I know that would fuel me. And um, they had a great time. They gritted, they um, took pictures, you know, and I just like, that's just a memory that keeps playing in my head every day. Um, just them having a great time while we're just smoking around and uh, disappointed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's you know that's I'm sure that those images as as the summer workouts are happening, you get into the fall. Those are the things that are going to help uh, fuel you. And speaking of that, I'm curious. You know, you, you've now taken some time in the off season. You're kind of working on your game. I, I'm really wanting to know what is it about your game specifically? Are you working on over the summer? What are you trying to get better at to take your game to the next level? I just want to be a monster. I told that to our nutritionist because uh, she does like our body scans and stuff like that. That I want to be a monster. I want to be – I don't care where you put me on the field. I just want to be able to uh, dominate in it no matter – I want to be – I want. I'm working more on my versatility mm-hmm. of uh, no matter where the coaches put me because I played a lot everywhere in the line last year. I'm just trying to make sure I still have that, but I dominate at it. So I can dominate that edge. If they put me at three, which is a possibility this year, I can go at three, put me at nose – Okay, I don't have a problem Mike putting that putting Mike at nose. He did it last year, but this year it's trying to be like Mike looks really good at nose. Mike looks really good at two. Oh shit, we can put Mike at three. Mm-hmm. Mike looks good at a four eye. Oh, <laughs> we can put Mike at five. Like, <laughs> so it's like we can we just don't like we can't just have this man at in the entire game because he's so good at everything else. So that's where I'm trying to bring my game to. I, lo- I can say I was down on the field for the spring game and you did look like a monster, but I, I'm just a normal guy, but you look like a huge monster. It looks like you put on some weight, some muscle. <laughs> yeah, I was I did, terrified. I, weight, yeah. um, I, I was actually going to ask that, Chris, since ahead. you yeah. brought up the specific number or the specific topic I was thinking of. On the website, you're listed 66278. How is your body now as you're getting you know into the summer and getting ready for fall camp? And when you talk about playing edge and then three and then nose, like, those are different body type dudes, but if you can do all three, you know, what, where are you at right now? Do you have a target weight? I mean, is, do they talk to you about that? Like what, what is the preparation for as you get geared up for fall camp? Uh, I'm just going to say like, I'm feeling great. <laughs> I'm just going to say I'm feeling great. All right. Uh, that's, that's top secret eating, information. Uh, we've been eating good. 
Um, <laughs> Abigail has me um, on a on a good nutrition plan where, like, I might step on the scale, I might weigh something that I don't want to see, but I feel great when I'm running. Like, I still can keep up with the linebackers and um, the tight ends. So, I'm like, I'm shifting my focus to more of let's be a dog on the field and no one can block me rather than stepping on the scale and me not liking the number. There you go. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Uh, <laughs> so I hate to keep bringing up, this will be the last time I bring up Ohio state, but it's only as a segue up as much as possible. Listen, this is only as a segue to another program that I hate with every fiber of my being. I got to talk about Michigan state a little bit. Look, I know you guys had some success against Ohio state, but as somebody who's in the market, like I'm paying attention to what's going on in East Lansing. And for me, it seems like there is a lot of momentum over there right now in terms of recruiting. They feel confident about what they've got going on down there. As a Michigan fan, that really pisses me off. I'm sure as somebody who plays for the team, you feel a sense of frustration. You guys shifted your focus when it comes to Ohio State. I'm curious, given the way the last two seasons have gone, is there more of an emphasis on Michigan State inside the locker room? Are you guys kind of more aware of that rivalry? Oh, yeah. We have to uh, get back, Paul. That's something that's very apparent. Um, yeah, that's something that that's something that really hurt. That's something that really hurt last year. I feel like that's that had to happen in order for, to beat Ohio State and to win the Big Ten Championship. Um, you look back and everything, every game that we've gone through has been amazing. Oh, Michigan looks so good. And then we were on a high horse and going to Michigan State thinking that we're going to win. And then we get – we go up and then it doesn't look too happy at the fourth. You know? So we needed that to happen. And um, now they're coming back to back to Main Street and um, we got to hold our ground. So yeah. I'm looking forward to that game. Um, I hope they are. <laughs> it sounds like they are. It looks like they yeah. are. I think everybody's yeah. looking forward to that game yeah. for sure. Yeah. That's all the football related questions I've got, Brandon. If you've got anything more, we can move into that. I, yeah, you know, I have one that I think a lot of people are curious yeah. about. When you lose, when you lose two guys like like David Ojabo, who you've already mentioned, and Aiden Hutchinson at the a similar position to to what you play, even though you just talked about maybe bumping inside. And I know Aiden did a little of that as well. Yeah. I just wonder. Here's the deal. Every year, good college football teams lose really good players. Like, that's the name of the game. And every year, fans are like, all right, well, Aiden's gone now. That means Mike Morris has got to come in and get 12 sacks. That's not exactly how it works. But I wonder, do you look at that number? Do you use that as motivation? Are you saying, look, I'm going to go out and beat Aiden's number that he just set last year? Or is it more about, like you just said, doing your specific job at multiple different positions? Like, how do you prepare yourself mentally for the season knowing – I hate to say that you're playing in his shadow, but I mean, that's what people are looking at. They're looking at for a guy to come in and fill the void that he left. Um, everybody's looking for the next Aiden Hutchinson, the next David Adabo, but um, I'm, it's all the fans who are listening or have a possibility of listening. I'm, I'm Mike Morris. I can't, I can't be them. So whatever y'all get out of me, y'all get out of me, but I am going to give them my all. Um, there will be no energy left out on the field for me. Um, so all I can do is focus on me, myself, and uh, what I can contribute to the team because I spent what, 21 years of my life being Mike Morris. I can't go out and be play like Aiden Hudson, play like David Adabo. Like, we just don't have – we. I, I mean, I could try, but we wouldn't have the same impact if I play like Mike Morris. I feel like we're going to be very good and very, in very good hands. Yeah, yeah I, I want to know I'm, – I'm curious. Uh, you talked a little bit about – or the loss of David Ojabo and the loss of Aiden Hutchinson. And from a leadership standpoint, not just the, the production on the field itself, but have you transformed the way you go about your business in the locker room and in the weight room from a leadership standpoint? Is that something you're making more of an effort to focus on this year? Oh, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause um, we got, we got to uh, workouts in uh, I think February and um, I'm in the workout. I'm looking to my right. I'm looking to my left. Um, don't see Josh Ross. Don't see Brad. Don't see uh, any of the seniors who um, who led us or had a vocal role last year. And I'm like, all right, let's work out. And and then freshmen and mid years are looking at me because I'm the biggest guy, and it's like, oh shit, Mike. And then <laughs> the coaches are looking at me saying I have to be more vocal. It's like, yeah, Mike, it's it's that time. It and is. Then, yeah. 
yeah so i'm working working my way up to it um working my way into it um i've definitely had to be more vocal this year and uh every day that goes by i get better at it so well, I think the good news is you had it, like a guy with Aiden Hutchinson or even David Ojabo. You've had two really good examples of guys who elevated their game and set the example, kind of laid the blueprint out. Now it seems like it's just a matter of following what that what that was. But to your point, doing it as Mike Morris, and I'm really excited to see what that looks like in 2022. I've got the fun questions next. If 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 you're ready, now listen. I'm not going to put you. We're not going to put you in teammate confession here. These are just random. Oh, we're questions. not doing teammate. No, confession. we're not going to do teammate confession right. this time. We're yeah, going to go. Chris, we're going to. Chris got in trouble. We got. We did, we've been we've been dogging Chris all week. Did he get? What did he get in trouble for? Was it the worst dressed? It was the worst dress. Oh my we've been, god! We've been, I've been I've been making Chris feel so bad this whole week. <laughs> oh man, see, it was I, made all... it, I made it a mission to make him feel bad. <laughs> it was all in good fun. It was all it was all love. It was all love. Yeah. That is so uh, funny. let's go to six. We'll go to six random questions. We're not going to ask about anybody's outfits this time. <laughs> let's get some funny music going on, Brandon. Give me something comical. Do we have funny music? I, you threw me on the spot. I didn't know we were going to be doing that. Let me see. Something something goofy. We're going to call it six random questions. Six random yeah. questions for Mike Morris. How's uh, that music? This is perfect because you've got a friend in me. And I just I, this is going to give fans a little bit of an opportunity to know a little bit more about you. The first question we're going to start out with, Mike Morris, is who is the scariest horror film character of all time and why? Who freaks you out? That's a good one. I hate scary movies, by the way. Can't stand them. I'm gonna go with Annabelle. Oh, oh the doll. Awesome. Okay, okay. I didn't expect I that. Hate, I hate dolls. <laughs> I hate dolls. What a passion. Yeah, I can if see, I see that. A doll, I will immediately like. I'll just like throw a little hit in there. Have you ever have you ever walked into a house where somebody collects them? Like oh, they're on the walls. Yes. They're yes. everywhere. Like, they sleep bed. Like my grandma used to have one. My grandma used to have a ball in the bed. Uh, like on the I don't understand. Bedroom. I think that phase is past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that phase is past, and I'm glad for it. All right, so we got Annabelle for number one. I like it. Let, let's go number two, Mike. You're going to be stranded on a desert island, but you can only take one. We're all adults here. You can only take one swear word with you <laughs> on this on this on this island. You're stranded on. You can't use any of the other ones. You can only take one with you. Which one is it? And you can you can abbreviate it. You can you know, yeah. You don't you it. don't have to say it if you don't want to look like a bad guy out. It's here. the one you go to. It's the one you can't live without. It's, this is the easiest question in the world, Chris. Uh, you would think. I hope I don't get in trouble for this. I hope no kids are watching. <laughs> if, if you're watching, turn away, please. <laughs> um, probably like. It's fuck, man. Yeah, that's got to be it. That's <laughs> like, the one. Word. That's everybody's choice. Kids, the one. kids leave. Kids leave. It's, it's it, like, yeah. Listen, it's, it's like, seven thirty. They like, should be in bed. I'm anyway. here. It's like you see, you see a you see a big animal. You see a big ass animal. It's like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like it comes in handy in every situation. Like it can I don't be used for good, like, bad. It's yeah, it's whatever. I'm hungry. That's it. Yeah. See, you that's the one. You eat a coconut. Fuck this coconut. Good as fuck. Yes. Yeah, that was my curse word. I, you know what, Mike? Uh, I knew I was. I knew I was gonna like you, Mike. All right, uh, here we go. Let's let's just let's just keep on going down the path, Mike. You're out. You're having a good time, and all of a sudden you get arrested. Your your family and friends get a call. Mm -hmm. They don't know what it is. Why do your family and friends think you got arrested? What is it that Mike Morris probably most likely did? <laughs> I didn't even what's, go out, so I don't know. Uh, what's a guy like Mike Morris gonna get arrested for? Hmm. I don't know. What would I get arrested for? I find myself answering these questions for myself. That's hey, that's an acceptable answer. It was a mistake, maybe. Yeah, right? maybe you were wrong for wrong identity, you... mistaken identity. Probably defending somebody. Uh -huh. oh, there you go. There you go. That's a good answer. Defending somebody's honor. I like that. Yeah. We'll we'll take that. That's that. if you're gonna go to jail, I guess that's a good reason to go I to jail. I feel like I definitely get wrapped into wrapped into something. Like there you are. Right. There's a punch at somebody, and I'm trying to. And then it's it. on. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Here we go. Listen, this is a serious question. There's a lot of them floating out there these days, Mike, and I want to know what conspiracy theory do you think might actually be true? Oh, There's reptilians. Reptilians right now. He answered that immediately. So Billions. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. So we're talking about the reptilian species of people that live here on Earth, like they're aliens, but they kind of. Rep Tillions are real. Oh. We used to be talking about this every. We used to be on this every day last season. We Reptil would like like five to ten minutes of our meeting time 
talking about reptilian. <laughs> okay, let me. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you? Is Ryan Day a reptilian? He he might be. Look at this Re reptilian humanoids. It's like a thing. If you go, like people are into yeah. this right now. You have to go on like the dark, like the, the dark side of TikTok or like the dark side of the web. I'm telling you, man, they're real. They're real. I'm gonna have to do some homework. I, I only heard very surface level about this reptilian thing, but he was quick on it, so it leads me to believe there might be something there. It's like, okay, it's like it's like this, like like you literally cannot go to Antarctica. Why is that? Well, that's because that's where the alien ships are. They're keeping yeah. them under the ice. The that's what they're doing. Are alive. Okay, all right. So we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to do a whole nother conspiracy show with Mike Morris here. I feel like there's something else here going on that we, that we can play off of. All that right, was, that was such a that was the fastest answer in the history of the show. It was right reptilians, there. no question about yes. it, like 100 percent certainty. All right, Mike, two more questions for you. Next one. What's your worst fashion mistake of all time? I know you're a fashionable guy. I know you've done some things. You've stretched the limits here and there. What's the worst fashion mistake you ever made? While Mike, while Mike is thinking, by the way, Ron Thomas with the reptilian's a pretty badass nickname for the a reptilian. For us, that's the a reptilian? pretty badass nickname right there. <laughs> he might have just got a nickname. I don't from know that if he name. wants to be associated with. Yeah, that maybe group. not. But that's that is pretty strong. That's like a that's like a um, ooh, Marvel character. I mean, look, I had a bowl cut. I wore jinkos. You know what mm. I mean? I had a rat tail at one point. I had a little. That's got tail. Oh, definitely the hot top fade. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. not bad. That's not I mean, bad. that was acceptable at the time. I don't have the head for it. You know, okay. So, so okay. Back, All right. It's like, it's like, so, I'll have like yeah. I understand. So the haircut was okay, but not on you. <laughs> not on not on me. Right okay. hair, wrong head. All right. All right. Perfect. All right, there you we go. go. <laughs> All right, man. Last one. Now we've gotten a lot of interesting answers from guys like Blake Corm, Mozzie Smith, big country fans on the Michigan football team. I wasn't aware of. I want to know, Mike, what is your guilty pleasure song? What's a song that like you're like, man? I don't want my boys to know I like this song, but when it comes on and it's on the radio, if nobody's in the car, he's got another, he's I'm not changing it. Up. No, I change your things. Yes, I, a little bit. That song, uh, where that got, um, what's her name? Out of the, um, out of Vecna's. If uh, uh, uh I'm gonna be <laughs> with God. And I get on the swap out places. <laughs> he's even that singing. That's my jam, man. That's the one. I play with my headphones, and I'm just in well, the car. I'm riding. So if we see you cruising Ann Arbor, yeah, there's have, a chance. I have another song. Um, uh, yeah, I, I have. Well, so let me ask you this. No, because we had Blake Corm. We tried to do some throwback songs for Blake Corm, and they were throwbacks for me. I'm. I. Mm -hmm. What is a throwback song for a guy like you? What's throwback love songs for somebody your age, 21 years old? Throwback love songs. Yeah, like when you're thinking of a classic love song. What's a classic love song to you, Mike Morris? Hmm. Uh, um, Alicia Keys. Uh, what's that song? See, um, that was, I was, I was in, good. I was in high school Keys, though. Yeah, I mean, Mike was born like the I year find, if, I, if I don't have you, right? Yeah. yeah. If I don't have you, yeah. See, I I figured that might be the case. His classics were the ones that I was bumping and grinding to in high school, man. We're That's getting old. You were born in two thousand one, is that right, Mike? Or you got oh one, baby? Man, dude. Man, I graduated in 02. High school. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah so no, it's it's no, rough no, out no, here. No, no, no. It's rough out yeah, here in the streets. But hey, that I I thought it was fun. I thought we got to learn about Mike. Mike is a hmm. uh, a reptilian uh, conspiracy certainist. Theorist. Is that what you call him? Theorist. Well, no, it's not a theorist. If you're certain, you're a certain. I mean, yeah, you're pretty. Well, you're pretty. pretty it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was awesome. I had fun. Mm. Man, dude, that is. I don't know much about the reptilian thing. I know it's kind of like a hashtag. Like I see it pop up now and then, and I'm like, I don't really know. Maybe we need to do like an hour long show where Mike can get a, a don't board. Close out. your mind to it. Do not close your mind to it. They're not here. They're here. Does being from Florida have anything to do with it? <laughs> we got a lot of gators. That's what I'll say. That's what I'm saying. Like you know, I mean, <laughs> just some kind of weird morphing that happens there down there. There is a lot of retired. There's like okay. There's a lot of retired people in Florida. I will say that. <laughs> And is that okay? So reptil oh. reptilians could be old people. Man, <laughs> Mike Morris with f bombs and reptilians and Stranger Things. The kids and left. The kids left. He sung. He fly. sang. The is he the first fly. guest to sing on the show as well? Uh, I think Blake might have given us a couple of keys, but yeah, he they didn't go that far. Yeah, Mike. They didn't Mike go that put far. out like three bars right there, dude. He had the whole. He was ready for the whole song, beautiful. Mike. 
thank you so much for the time, man. We're right at 30 minutes, so that was just about perfect. And lots of health and lots of success to you this year, my man. I mean, I appreciate y'all having me on. I appreciate yeah, that. for sure. Absolutely. There season. you have it. Mike Morris. What I mean, dude, one of the more entertaining – one of the more entertaining <laughs> strings of random questions we've ever done with a player. I didn't really know. I didn't really know where he was going to go with some of those. I didn't know what your questions were. I think this was one of the first times I didn't get like a preview of the question. So I was, I was in, just I was in the dark too. I was just flying off the dome there towards the end. Man. I just wanted to see, he was given such good answers. You know, I wanted to keep going. I wanted to get, more. I really, uh, I was trying to find the stranger things song that he was talking about, but I don't know the name of it. And I didn't want to pull up something that wasn't correct. So anyway, do you know the song he was talking about? I don't know the name from of it. Stranger Things. No, yeah. I, I mean I, I watched the show, but I'm not I'm not exactly sure what the song. I'm not you know I'm like I'm not like into into Stranger Things, but I've watched yeah. it. So All I right, like well, it. there you go. The Reptilian. The Reptilian. Nine O. He, uh, he has left the building. I thought that was another great segment. Yeah, man, that was fun. It was cool. There you go. Meredith came through. That see, that was the song that popped up when I typed in typed it in on youtube but i was like i don't know if this is the name of that song and she said it is stranger things song dude <laughs> does mike morris uh does mike this morris now lead Webflow. all meet the design all people and f-bombs on this podcast I, and, and he can't have more than me maybe in, tri in a tribute to Mike Morris as we as we wrap up his uh, his appearance. <laughs> oh, is this it? This is, is this it. it. Yeah. This is what Mike Morris is just jamming to before he like goes and takes the head off of a bus. He, he really gets into it. He sings it hard. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Damn. Wow. Okay. Well, listen, I'll say that that classifies as a guilty pleasure. There's no question about that. All right. I'll fade it out because I just don't even know how to feel about that song. <laughs> All right. A um, <clears throat> couple things here before we get into some of the meat of the of the pod. Real quick, Eric Backich, the ba baseball coach at Michigan, looks like he's on his way out. Now, you know, Chris and I admittedly aren't big baseball guys. We don't do a ton of coverage on that. And don't follow it all that closely, but I feel like we'd be a little bit remiss if we didn't at least mention the fact that he's probably headed to Clemson, which is kind of where he got his start. For those of you out there who don't follow baseball closely either, Eric Backich went to Eastern Carolina University and spent one year at his first coaching job ever. Uh, one year in 2002, there's our graduating year, Eric Backich was, the, was an assistant coach at Clemson, kind of got his start there, and now... Uh, looks like he's going to go back there and take that job over. And that's just tough because he's done things at Michigan that usually don't happen at like Big Ten Northern baseball schools. You know, making the College World Series is pretty rare. College baseball is dominated by Southern schools and schools in California and Texas. And it's really tough for Big Ten schools like Michigan or anywhere in the North to break through. And he was able to break through on some levels. He was able to recruit some really good players and obviously – win a lot of games and have some success. So yeah, the fact that he's leaving is not, is not awesome, but you know, it's kind of a homecoming for him. He's actually a California guy. He was born in California, but played his college baseball in the, in the, in the Southeast and then spent a year at Clemson. So, you know, I think he actually turned down the Clemson job already once he's been at Michigan for a long time and uh, looks like he couldn't, he couldn't pass it up this time. I don't think anything's officially been announced, but Alex, uh, listen, happen. we got to Alex. Is it, is it Reber? Reber, Alex has broken the code. He figured you out. What happened? He, he figured you out. Alex, Alex Reber or Alex Reber. He's got a question for you, Brad. Oh my Lord. It's finally happened. It finally happened. Listen, Brandon, are your glasses in your Twitter profile picture? Photoshop. This has been bothering me for a while. Alex. They are 100% photoshopped onto my face. Now, glasses. I can't remember what the reason was. I didn't have them. I think maybe so this pair, this pair is actually about to go as well. Um, they're, they're bent and broken. I need a new pair, but I think at the time when I had that Twitter, I wanted a picture in front of the, in front of the sports illustrated background, my glasses were broken. So I didn't wear them for the picture. And I started to realize that my glasses are a pretty, 
uh, it's a pretty recognizable feature of my, like, you know, when people see me on Twitter, recruits or coaches or players or parents, and then I meet them in real life. Actually, this happened when we were in Chicago because I don't wear my glasses for the podcast ever because there's a glare. I met somebody at the, it was one of the linemen's moms was there running the event. And they were like, I didn't even recognize you without your glasses. So my thought going back to putting the, <laughs> putting the fake glasses on my face was that I liked the photo in front of the background. But at that time, I didn't have my glasses because one of the arms was busted off the side or something. So I was like, yeah. Photoshopped glasses. This is the world we live in now. I'll just Photoshop them in I'm there. just going to do a profile picture and Photoshop a beautiful head of hair on top of me. Might as well. Why not? Here's Here was my thinking. Here was my thinking. In my opinion... It would be a much bigger deal to Photoshop glasses off. It's like you're trying to make it look like I don't wear glasses or in your case, Photoshop in a lush. Listen, I'm going to Photoshop in Uncle Jesse's mullet is what I'm going to do. for. I'm going to Photoshop in shaved eyebrows in my next profile picture and see how everyone likes that. And we have old we have veteran Chris with no microphone again. You know, it, or like, all right, so like, let's say I have a giant beer belly and I Photoshop it out. You can't be doing that. Well, that's what but people if you do, though. That's why I don't even know how pe- I don't even know how dating apps work nowadays with filters and shit. It's like, how do you even know that the person you're going to show up looks like the person you, you agreed to date? Alex, I got to know. I mean, how closely are you looking at my face, first of all? And second of all, well done. I mean, that's it's been up there for a long time, and you're the you first out. one who's ever brought it up. He figured you out. You're the first one who's ever brought it up. So there you feel, go. Hey, I feel a little bad. Did we get Chris Jenkins in trouble? I might have to. I might have to read. Nah, I think he, I think Mike was just. You know, they're they're just dogging each other. They're just. You know, that's that's how guys rib. I don't want to single handedly bring down yeah. the 2022 Michigan football season. D line just hates either. each other because he told somebody <laughs> that he dressed like a clown because of your question. <laughs> awesome (laughs) oh boy all right chris don't talk for 19 seconds god damn it just call it All right, there's what the, the hell was that? What is that? Did I got honest questions? Did anybody that was listening hear that? Did anybody that was listening actually make that out? <laughs> it's up all the way. It's as loud as it can be. Uh, that is a small clip from the movie No Country for Old Men, where the crazy psychopathic killer flips a coin and tells the old guy at the store to call it. I'm doing a segment with Chris right now called Call It. Wait a minute, am I the old guy at the store? You're the old guy at the store. You must call it. I can't call it for you. So call it. This isn't quite like burning questions because we're not going to launch into. Yeah, I know we couldn't hear it because Chris was laughing over there and making. I didn't say anything. I I was quiet. I let it happen. I let it happen. A 19 second drop is just. It's a little much. All right. (laughs) We're going to go. I got five questions. You got to call it off the top. This is like the Rorschach test. You just yell out what you think right away. Let's this go. is not a long, drawn-out thing like like burning questions or a long segment. You don't want an like, explanation. You just want an answer. Tiny, if you've if you've got one, a very quick one. I just really want to hear where you where you're going with, right off the dome, as fast as you can go. You ready? I'm always ready. Number one, will Amani Bates play for Michigan next year? No. Okay, that was fast. Like it's not Mike Mike Morris reptilian fast, but it was pretty fast. <laughs> No, Pretty because uh, well, well, there, it feels like it could happen. It's starting it feels to feel like, like it could happen. happen. It feels like it could happen, and that's why I'm saying no, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Number two, J.J. McCarthy starts the opener against Colorado State. No. no. Ah, no. see, you still – you. It will you don't be like saying that. It, it, it will it, if a change comes, it won't be it won't come until the latter part of the season. We know that Cade's going to do just well the first four weeks of the season. Yeah, I think you're probably right there. All right, this one might you might have to think a little longer because it's not a yes or no. But okay. I just want a name. I want a name. Who leads Michigan in receiving touchdowns in 2022? Go. Uh, Go. AJ Henning. AJ Henning. Wow. Because I think the jet the jet sweeps do count as a reception, correct? If it's a push pass, yeah. It if depends on how he gets it. 
yeah. Depending on how they use him, I think he's going to get in the end zone quite a bit this year, especially okay. uh, out of the red zone. Interesting. We got three Ronnie Bells in a row right there. I mean, there's would a be, lot of I guys mean, that would be great. Pick. Andrell, my my mind immediately went to Andrell, but my mind always I thought goes that's to what you'd say. Yeah, I thought that's who you'd say. I probably would pick AJ Henning to be like fourth, maybe. Yeah, if the, Eric, oh, if the quarterbacks, if the quarterbacks JJ McCarthy, I would think it's Andrell. They've got some great, okay, fair, you know, some great chemistry. But if it's you know Cade McNamara, I'm not sure. Number four, does Aiden Hutchinson record a sack in his first ever NFL game home against the Philadelphia Eagles? Yes. Yeah, you yes, think so absolutely. right out of the gate. Absolutely, he gets home. Absolutely. I'm curious to see how much he plays in the preseason. I mean, obviously, he's a rookie. He's trying to find his way a little bit, but he's the number two overall pick. You don't want him to get dinged. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I am I hope he I hope he plays phenomenally the second he steps out on the field, and that would be awesome to watch him, watch him get a sack in that first game. I'm going to try to be there because I would love to be there and talk to him afterwards and just kind of get a – you know, a Michigan vibe type of article after that yeah, first yeah. game. So we'll see how that turns out. And I don't know if you can do this in a yes or no, because it's so layered. It's so deep and and you've got to, you've got to be able to explain yourself on this one. But if you could just do a yes or no, it's probably impossible, but I'm going to ask you to anyway, Chris, do you like NIL? Yes. Okay. Is, uh, there, is it fair to say that there are layers to that answer? Or yes, do you just, yes, does it blanket, yes. Can you blanket say, yeah, I like it. I like all of it. I like, I like NIL. What I don't like is the people who aren't, it, it's here. It's like, it doesn't matter whether or not you like oxygen. Oxygen's here. We breathe it in. NIL is here. So like. Comparing <laughs> oxygen to NIL. Got it. I, it's here. It's already happening. If it's going to be here, if it's going to be here, embrace it. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's a tough question. I mean, the, the reason why I ask is because we've started talking about some recruiting stuff here lately. Listen, I'm not this guy that's going to be, uh, you know, the purity of the game. And I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not there. I'm over that. We started talking about it with some recruiting stuff lately because of what Michigan State's been able to do. We've seen some of these deals that guys have gotten that are just out. You know, there's crazy reported numbers and the, and, the, and the handouts that guys are getting. I mentioned it on Twitter the other day with Caleb Houston and Musa Diabate not being able to get NIL money as maybe a reason why they might have been more apt to stay in the NFL, uh, the NBA draft. We first learned about it with David Ojabo. I think he just kind of brought it up like in an answer. I think maybe you asked a question about it. it. Was, was like, I can't get it. And it was like, on the podcast. What? We talked about yeah. it. And he, yeah, that was the first we had realized that he couldn't. So any, you know, for anybody who, who wasn't sure or hasn't heard that before, players who are born outside of the U.S. cannot – cannot get NIL money. It has something to do with their work student visa and just how, how that all works. It's not like an NCAA rule or some weird Michigan thing. It's it's a, it's a, a blanket rule. I think there have been some exceptions made and some loopholes found for some international student athletes, but that's the third or fourth time I've heard it brought up for a player at Michigan. Ojabo was the first, now Caleb Houston, Musa Diabate. And yeah, so yeah, it's kind of a bummer. And for guys like that, it's, I, I would think it made a difference. I would think it absolutely made a difference. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm reverting back or I'm thinking back to our conversation with Mike Morris. I don't want to forget it, which is why I'm saying it. Did you, and it's not that it's a bad thing, but I really thought it was interesting. His take on that trip to Miami and kind of what the vibe was and maybe the impression that some guys were, were maybe just comfortable to be, and the, did you get that sense from that comment? Was that was that what you pulled from that? Or maybe it was like he wasn't trying to be that. He was locked in. I just kind of felt like maybe like – I don't know if the focus was entirely there for that Miami game. The Georgia game in, in Miami. Or I'm sorry, the Georgia game in yeah, Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. For yeah. The, for the and and, and is, that a fair, is that a fair takeaway from – I don't want to – I don't want to – take it out of context. I, I don't think you, I don't think you are. And when he was saying that, I'm like, well, <clears throat> that explains the ass whooping. I, I mean, on some levels, you know, like I, I think a lot of people thought Michigan might be able to win the game. And if they didn't win, at least it would be a good game. And it, it wasn't, I was going to ask if it was early. schematic or if it was talent. And after he said that, I didn't feel the need to ask either one of those. Yeah, I mean, obviously the, the Georgia team was loaded. There was tons yeah. of talent on there. They put more guys in the NFL than anybody else this past draft, but I mean, we've said it multiple times now at this point, Chris, as we've gone through these different discussions. Like if Michigan and Georgia played 10 times, 
I don't know if Michigan would win any of them, but I can't. I just didn't see them losing by 30. I mean, I know the final score was a little closer, but they were down by 30 at one point. I mean, the game wasn't close. Yeah. And so for him to kind of talk like that, I don't know. No, I don't think you're taking it out of context at all. I think he was pretty open in saying that they weren't quite there mentally. They weren't mentally prepared like they should have been, which is kind of surprising because that, that team had been able to get up and prepare mentally for pretty much every game all season. I mean, even the Michigan state game when they lost, I didn't, it wasn't because of a lack of mental preparation. I mean, they were in it. They took the lead early, you know, they had the lead late and they kind of fell apart down the end a little bit. So I'm surprised to hear that. And I wonder if other people feel the same way. I mean, he's entitled to think whatever he wants to think. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I mean, don't want it. I don't want it to come off as like, you know, something that's controversial and it's no, not, I don't, it Look, teams, I don't think it is teams, especially young teams get into a new environment. Things happen. You're celebrating You're you, you know, you're part of media, you know, if, if that's what he thinks happened or was partially to blame a lack of focus, it would make sense based on the result. Because I think a lot of people were scratching their head. Yeah, we knew Georgia was good, but we thought Michigan was going to put up a fight. And I think that sheds a little bit, maybe more light on, on what happened. And so I maybe wanted to bring that up because I wasn't sure if maybe I took that the wrong way or if, you know, I'd be willing to bet a lot of money that that might not have been Mike Morris's own, own thought. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if at halftime the coaches reamed everyone's ass saying exactly that. Sure. Yeah. You're, you're, we're, we're not prepared. You're playing like you're unprepared. You're playing like you're not ready for the stage. We're, co I mean, you know, I'm sure they put some blame on themselves too. We're, we're coaching like we're not ready for this. Like, we got to wake up. We got to do, we, you know, and maybe there was a message drilled home about that after the game too. I mean, how else do you explain getting beat the way you did? Yeah, when yeah. it just didn't look like it was going to happen that way. So I, I don't, I don't read anything into it in terms of it being like controversial or like, Oh, Mike Morris says that like, I don't, they got beat really bad. I mean, yeah, like yeah. You, you, it's not like, it's not like he's saying something that's like, I can't believe he said that. Well, did you, did you see how it looked on the field? <laughs> right, I mean, right. it's not, it's not like he's saying we played our best game we could ever play and they still drilled us by 30. Like that's yeah, not right. what happened. I think anybody who watched that game and anybody who was in the locker room and preparing for that thing probably knows that something wasn't quite right. It was a little off that day. And so, no, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And I don't think it was a controversial thing to say, but I was a little surprised. I was a little surprised he said it. Yeah. But you know, it would explain, it would explain why it started, how it did and how they fell into such a deep hole right out of but the gate. See, that's the, that's the stuff like, that's what I love about doing a show. Not like saying this. that at a press conference. He's not saying that at a press no. conference. And the fact that we can have that kind of conversation here, and it's not going to blow up. I don't think it should blow up, but I want people to feel like they can come here and just be honest with the way things are going. And and you know the shift in focus towards Michigan State. I'm glad that that's there. I'm glad that these guys know that. You know, even if the fans don't seem to think anything much of what's happening in East Lansing, I think this program, the guys inside of it are aware if they don't take care of business in Ann Arbor this year, it's going to be a problem. Please. You see what happens? You see what happens when you let them win? You get shit like that. You get speaking of <sighs> speaking of the bird poop flavor or the bird poop Hell colored God. uniform guys. Flavored? Jesus, what am I thinking about? Um, spam. If you're thinking of spam, probably. That's coming, isn't it? Is that it coming? Is, well, it might. Michigan State, Michigan recruiting. We talked about it earlier in the week. You know, Mel Tucker, the Jays, the G-Wagon, the, uh, the Cigar, the, the Iced Out Chain, the recruits loving it. Michigan State now up to eight four-star commitments in that 2023 class. And look, I've seen a lot of things that have come out. Michigan hasn't picked up a commitment in football in like 80 days. That's a long time. That's a pretty long drought. But I've seen several people talking about this today, that Michigan got like 75% of its class last year on this date or later, meaning like Michigan's still going to do a lot of work and they're still going to be okay. You've got Victor's weekend coming up this weekend. You've got the barbecue later in the summer. Like there's really big events coming up. Guys that are, you know, guys that they lead for, are going to take a couple more visits, but likely will end up picking Michigan. I put a story up about that earlier in the week. So I, I expect Michigan's recruiting class to get better. I think that's 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 kind of beside the point. Like Michigan's always recruited just fine. That's not that's not anything new. I think the the change and what you need to pay attention to is how Michigan State is doing independently. Not that in, not that Michigan State's doing really well right now, and Michigan's not. I don't think that's. I don't think those two things are related at all. And I don't, I think they operate independently. 
Like Michigan State's going to do what they do. Michigan's going to do what they do. And at the end, you, you see where they're at. But if you are not, if you are just passing off what Michigan State's doing as like, nah, it's no big deal. No one cares. I think you're lying to yourself, man. And Chris, you and I talked about this earlier in the week. Now Michigan State's got two more four-star guys in the fold. We talked about our panic slider. It was both at like seven, seven and a half for us. But Tucker's doing something, man. It's really and I don't think there's bad. anything wrong with us saying that. No, but it's it is a little bit strange to me, just given the way that last year played. I mean, I know that the Spartans beat the Wolverines in East Lansing, but Michigan won a Big Ten championship. They yeah, went to the absolutely. college football playoff. I mean, I'm looking at what's happened, and, and maybe, and we said this before, maybe on the Monday show that we did, maybe it's just a a, a messaging problem more than it is like what's actually happening. Like Michigan State and and Mel Tucker actually went on a podcast and talked about this specifically, how they've got like six people dedicated to their social media team, their football program, just on social media, pumping out content. And we talked to Chris Jenkins, do guys pay attention like to stuff like that? Do recruits pay attention? And they do. And if you look at Michigan's social media and what they're putting out there, it's not even on the same level. And so I, I kind of look at it from the, the 1000 foot view. And I say, why is there so much momentum and activity happening in East Lansing? And right now in Michigan, it just kind of seems stale. Yeah, And I think that's a fair, which doesn't mean it's not going to change. And Michigan isn't going to sign a hell of a class, but as of now, all of the recruiting momentum is in East Lansing. All of the energy is in East Lansing. I think at least that's, that's a uh, perception. That's a good way. That's a good word to use right now is a little stale. And I mean, yeah. somebody could say like, Oh, you're just hating. They haven't got I'm a, not. In two and a half months. I mean, what do you call that? You know, yeah, I mean, they I, just I, had a big, big visit weekend with double digit official visitors, several guys who feel like Michigan leans and nobody committed. And it's been over two months. That's, that's, that's the definition of stale. Um, and, and Meredith, I don't think you are alone in the thought, you know, Harbaugh's flirtation with the NFL that derailed a lot of the momentum they could have had and could have been riding on and built building up through that month long is he staying? Is he going? Is it this team? Is it that team? Then he flies to Minnesota, takes an interview, and then now he's back. I mean, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that 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 that's in some people's minds on some level. But it, you're right. It seems like there's more momentum in East Lansing right now than there is in Ann Arbor, which is wild given what Michigan did last year. It just doesn't really make much sense right now. But it's June 15th. The first signing day is six months away, and then there's another one two months after that. Plenty of time to do lots of work on the trail, and Michigan will. Again, like I said, they got 75% of their class committed on this date or later last year. But now you've got NIL fully in full swing, and teams are utilizing that in a way that Michigan's really not. We talked about this earlier in the week. This is If Michigan State suddenly signs a better class than Michigan – you, you have to pay attention to that because it hasn't happened before, like literally ever. Maybe one time out of the last, I don't know, you said you put a story up about that. Like the last 20 years, Michigan was either one or two every year, except for maybe three. And I think those three was Penn state, not Michigan state that yeah. might have knocked them off that perch. So yeah, it's, it's something worth paying attention to. There's no doubt. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Um, I don't know. Getting two more recruits for Michigan state, doesn't move my my panic meter at all, no. but it's still there. It's still there, and it it's there is definitely some some buzz and some momentum around East Lansing. I won't I won't move. I'll stay at a seven until we see what the results are in Ann Arbor. Overall. I mean, if if, if 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 Tucker goes to three and zero in Ann Arbor with two of those wins, or I'm sorry, three and zero with two of those wins coming in Ann Arbor against Jim Harbaugh, that's concerning. That's like. Red alarm, like there's there's an issue with East Lansing because now you're talking about a potential 0-4 against a guy who's just first four games against you. You can't let that happen if you're Jim. And I don't want to get too far ahead, but this is what happened with Ohio State. Six years goes by quick. It mm -hmm. happens quick. They got to take care of business this year. If there's one wanna... must-win game on the schedule, it's East Lan it's it's <laughs> Michigan State. I did want to bring this up because somebody on the on the YouTube page commented like, "Well, Michigan, you know, it was the, it was our is Tuck coming video." A Michigan State fan got on there and commented and was like, "This is because, you know, ever since Mark D'Antonio has been there, Michigan State has started to focus their 
not their only not their attention but like the level that they're trying to reach is kind of how they put it they they still focus a ton of energy on Michigan and want to win that rivalry game and and while D'Antonio was there like they won it more times than they lost it so like yeah. you can't really knock a Michigan State fan for saying that but they but this person commented and said Michigan State has not has since D'Antonio has shifted its level to competing with Ohio State like they're looking past Michigan and trying to get to the level of Ohio State and I was like bro Ohio State was up 49 to nothing on Michigan State last year at yeah. halftime. I think you know, focus can maybe I think things are out of focus a little bit still there. I know That's they beat saying too big they, for their britches. This is what happens. You get yeah. Spartan dog, you get shitty articles like that, you get all kinds of crap. You just got to take care of business. It is out yeah. of control in East Lansing. There you go. All right. Shut um last uh legitimate thing before you really you know spread some stuff out there i don't, I don't you're gonna oh, air some dirty laundry you got a lot coming i'm a it, little it concerned literally dirty laundry was there dirty laundry in there all right we'll get to it we'll get to it <laughs> wolverine weekend um i'm excited dude it's wednesday night we're gonna be there on friday I think you know a little bit more about the specifics, so why don't you uh, – well, the floor is yours, Mr. Barber. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, so uh, they're doing the Wolverine weekend up at the Grand Traverse Resort in beautiful Traverse City, and was actually – somebody reached out to me from from the resort and asked me to do one of the hype videos for the dinner, um, and J.J. McCarthy's going to be there, Ronnie Bell is going to be there, um, Ryan Hayes is going to be there, John U. Bacon's going to be speaking, I think Devin Gardner is going to be there. So it's basically I, – I think it's a way for them to kick off the golf season up north um, – um, and they're going to have a group of Wolverines there where they're going to be out on the golf course. You can take pictures with them. I think there's going to be a little bit of an autograph session. And then there's a dinner um, later on in the evening. So if you're going to be up there, if you're in Traverse City, if you're going to Wolverine weekend, uh, we'll see up there. But I'm I'm excited for it, man. I think it's going to be cool. Dude, Father's Day weekend, Traverse mm -hmm. City, 70 and sunny on the golf course. I mean, golf with course a, with, with some Wolverines. Beautiful what's, hotel, little beachfront property, little pool side, little what's not little to like? golf course, bring the sticks. Get them. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good time. Beautiful weather all weekend. Not this hundred degree stuff we're dealing with today. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I can't wait, man. I'm super excited. Um, and we hope to get a lot of really good content from it. I mean, we're gonna be trying to get B roll stuff and a bunch of photos and maybe tie down some interviews and see what we can get. I mean, it's it's going to be a good time. So I'm really looking forward to that. And Chris and I will be heading up there Friday afternoon and staying through the weekend and coming back on Sunday. Uh, and who knows? Maybe we'll have an impromptu pod while we're up there on Saturday night after That's the day right. of right. events. Or, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we can put together. But really, really looking forward to uh, to getting up there and doing some of that stuff and enjoying northern Michigan in the summer. You can't beat it. Summertime in northern Michigan. Uh, Could have done without that. But uh, without further ado. <laughs> I don't know, Chris. Do you have a name for this? Is five randoms? Is I mean, is that five randoms? What I don't know. What is it? What are we doing? You said you had some pack of questions for me. No, the you... fi the five random questions were for Morris at the end. Oh, Those so what is this that we're doing here? Spider Man. We oh, gotta talk just, Spider Man. It's just Spider Man. It's just Spider Man. We're gonna okay. listen. Listen, if everybody well, listens, spam, and you mentioned a couple of well, you know, like, well forget were... about that. We gotta get right. to the issue at hand. Here's the deal. Before you guys pop off on a Friday, uh, let me set the stage here. A sex addiction or something. Listen, I went to a birthday party over the weekend, and I, you know, one of the things that's becoming popular at today's kids' birthday parties is they're having character experiences where these characters come. And they put on these, you know, the grand performances for the kids. Well, at the party I was at, Spider-Man came. And Spider-Man's very popular right now. But I personally, as a father, had a bit of an issue with Spider-Man. Brandon, I, I maybe just put the picture up. So I just want to know, for everybody out there, for everybody out there, now. Hold it out. Show it to you. Am I am I out of line or is this entirely inappropriate for a kid's birthday party? This dude, this dude went and did a handstand, a handstand like like Spider-Man would normally do. And I saw it shift from north to south. He went from six to midnight. He went from six to midnight while doing a handstand this guy. I, guys, I, I wish I was exaggerating, but literally when the kids were trying to interact with him, it was it was it was getting in the way. I don't know if we have the video that I sent to you, Brent. I, I didn't. I didn't put that up. I thought that might be 
a little much. So, you know, I guess that's just where we'll leave it. Am I crazy? Is that, you know, am, am I just overreacting? Am I an overreacting parent? Or is that just inappropriate for a child's birthday party? I mean, is, if this was a bachelorette party, maybe. So we, we, we asked each other, we asked ourselves, what's harder to address in person? My sandwich artist sweating all over my foot long or Chris talking to the talent that is Spider-Man about his, what would you say? Not foot long. We'll what do you, what do you, what do you say? What do you say to a kid like that at a, at a, or a guy like that at a kid's birthday party? You, you pull him aside and say, Hey man, like, what do you, what do you say? Yeah. What, what are the words? Anybody? What are the words in that scenario? <laughs> you ponder that. You ponder that for the next few. Days. One more time for everybody. If you needed to take a closer look. <laughs> Who is our guy who found out I had Photoshop glasses? I take a closer look at that. <laughs> Tell me what you think about that. <laughs> Close as you can get it, get right in there. Well, the poor little girl. <laughs> you have been told to leave. <laughs> yeah, well, it was it made for an exciting time for all the adults that were there. So uh yeah, that was that was my weekend. <sighs> when Chris, first of all, let me ask another question while we're here, folks. <laughs> Over under set at six and a half for the amount of photos Chris has of this guy in his phone. <laughs> six and a half is the over under. There, there. I mean, uh, 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 guys. I mean, it's six yeah. and a half is the over. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> What are we I'll doing? I'll tell you here? what, it's over because I've got damn near five or six of them because Chris sent them to me. She was damn near ready to kill it with a shoe. Look at this. <laughs> I'll save you, little girl. <laughs> Off yeah, I, thank you, Brady. I mean, I've seen it enough. I'm probably going to see it again this weekend in person. <laughs> oh, Jesus, the web slinger. It's time to go. It is time to go. Oh, uh, thank you, Darren. Thank you. <laughs> oh man, I don't even want to be on screen anymore. I'm ready to I'm ready to go. Let's just cut it. This that's yeah. how we wrap it up here. That's how we wrap it up here on a Wednesday night. So thanks for listening, everybody. Big shout out to Mike Morris for stopping yes. by and spending yes, some time yes, yes. with us. And again, we will be up uh in Traverse City this weekend for Wolverine Weekend. Hope to bring you guys a bunch of really good content. So stay tuned. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, the Facebook page, all that good stuff. All of it. We'll try to bring you as much content as we can. Take care, everybody. Have a good weekend.